What's up? This is Ben Alonzo from ultratechlife.com. I've got a cool video to show you about losing 100 pounds of weight in less than 10 months. I'll actually show you the scientific diet that I use to go from above 300 pounds to below 200 pounds. I've actually lost over 100 pounds of weight. This is probably one of the most difficult, challenging things I've ever done in my life. But I was determined and the results are amazing. I'm down at least 10 waist sizes. I continue to lose weight. I feel good in new clothes. I'm athletic now. I love going to the gym. If you were to ask me some time ago, hey Ben, let's go to the gym. It's gonna be awesome. We can work out. I would have been like, are you crazy? I've got higher priorities. A pile of nacho or a pizza meant more to me than physical activity. Nowadays, I love going to the gym. If not twice per day, I try to go at least once every single day. Lately, I've been running almost five miles every single day. Regular physical activity is good for you. Physically, it's good for you mentally if you're dealing with stress especially a constructive way to deal with depression. As a science professor, it makes sense if I tell my students, this is healthy, this is unhealthy. I should apply that in my life and lead by example. We need more credible people leading by example and then sharing their stories of success. One important tip before you start any diet or exercise program, especially a serious program, and if you've never done this before, work with a physician, work with a personal trainer, work with a health scientist to come up with a safe diet and a safe exercise routine for you. So I've been pretty busy lately, but I'll try to do more sharing content. I'd love to do that. You can help out by liking the video, commenting, sharing the video with your friends, subscribe. Check out the website, ultratechlife.com. So I challenge you, especially if you're overweight or obese, to check out this video and apply this in your life. See the difference science can make. It was pretty telling in graduate school to study obesity, specifically the fact that a majority of our country is unhealthy. About 72% of adults are considered overweight, and about 40% are considered obese. Now, as a matter of fact, we think our health surveillance system, that's things like our surveys, our health databases, census stuff, is both outdated and underestimated. So the numbers are much worse than what people think. Obesity is a serious, costly issue, not just for the obese person, but the entire country. Think of the economic losses, the loss of productivity, the health insurance claims, the expensive medications. This is a preventable disease. It's even a national security issue. Think of not enough physically fit people to run a military. Obesity is defined by something called the Body Mass Index, or BMI. Now, BMI is not a perfect number, but it's a good indicator of body fatness, and it gives us a number to work with in science. You figure this out by taking a person's weight in kilograms, and you divide that by the square of height in meters. A normal BMI is between 18 and 25. As you go higher than that, it gets risky. If you're above 35, 40, it's a severe case of obesity. The primary cause of obesity is a matter of consuming too much, not enough physical activity. And over time, your body stores that excess energy as fat, and it adds up, and you could become obese. There are contributing factors to obesity, things like not being able to afford a monthly gym fee. Maybe your neighborhood isn't safe enough to walk outside, or you can't afford healthy food. Some people blame genes, but genes are not your destiny. You can actually counteract genes by eating right and exercising. It's a scientific fact that obesity is unhealthy, extremely risky, it could kill you. It's linked to diabetes, to cardiovascular disease, to stroke, to all kinds of cancers, to blood clots that could kill you. It may be even worse through childhood obesity. Think of the isolation, the loss of confidence, the depression. That gets worse over time. If you let this get out of control, it will kill you. Obesity is so out of control that we're trying to figure out, even through legislative actions, a way to force people to eat right and drink right. I think the better option is to promote more science education, to have people informed and applying that in their lives, becoming healthier people. So it's worth becoming a healthier person. It's worth taking the first step. So step one is to become physically active. Find things to do throughout the day. Maybe that means ride a bicycle. I'm giving you an example here, play basketball. Be physically active. The most effective weight loss plan has three elements. A serious diet, physical exercise, and watching what you drink. Those three things are gonna give you the best results. 
One of the most common questions I'm asked is, what diet did you use to get the results you had? And it's actually something called the scientific keto diet. There's a growing amount of scientific evidence that says the keto diet is an effective way to rapidly lose weight. Now, the idea behind the keto diet is that you put your body into a state of ketosis by eating less than 20 to 50 grams of carbs per day. Now, it usually takes about two days to get into the state of ketosis, which means your liver's producing energy from stored fat called ketone bodies. Rather than using sugar or glucose, as it's called, from carbohydrates, things like fruits, vegetables, breads, things we shouldn't be eating too much of anyways, the french fries, things like that, our body's producing ketones. And this is how we rapidly lose weight. Now, you'll know you're in the state of ketosis by using ketone test strips. It's a careful keto diet of select proteins that are lean, like chicken, like steak like ground beef, even bacon, good fats like a little bit of avocado. It's a careful diet that you have to follow. As always, do this safely, work with a physician, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. In this case, a legitimate diet is going to limit your daily caloric intake. And that means that for the average person, you're going to be eating a limit of less than 1,500 calories per day. Now, some of the athletes, some of the more serious, aggressive people that are getting lots of exercise can get away with higher than that. We're talking 1,800 or higher than 2,000 calories a day. As a matter of fact, there's a more aggressive version of this diet that's 800 calories or below. You want to be careful with that. Work with a physician, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. As far as the diet, we're not talking about rice cakes here. We're talking about practical and this is what worked for me, especially when you're surrounded by junk food. Think about what I can eat, what I can eat. Maybe I like cheeseburgers. Well, don't eat the bun. Eat the patty itself, the lettuce, the onions. Maybe put jalapenos on it. That stuff is fine. Maybe eat one or two french fries. I love tacos. How about without the taco shell, a taco salad? You can make this work. Where there is a will, there is a way. So let's talk about distractions. These could be literally anything, anyone, and they can happen at any time. If you're very independent, strong-willed, strong-minded, you might be able to manage these things or cut them out, but you need to decide to do either one or both. And I'll give you examples of these things. It could be cultural hazard. You, there, we have people in our country, too many people, it's the frequency and amount like to eat too much and too often. And if you surround yourself with these people, you're going to be tempted. Maybe they invite you every night out to dinner to drink. They get a big appetizer. If you decide to go, you're going to have to make another decision. I can take one or two chips, whatever the appetizer, one hot wing, or not even that. I sit there, talk to them, and sip water, something like that. I can go there. Or if I can't handle that, that's too tempting. That's distracting. That's going to derail me from my weight loss my goals, then I don't go at all. But see, so you're going to have to make the decision there to cut out these distractions. Other distractions, they're all over the internet. There's these pills that are a fortune, there's powders, there's fake injections, there's fake medications that come from overseas. All kinds of crazy wild claims that aren't backed up by one bit of science. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an example of what I did, what my exercise regimen looks like. And importantly, before you start any kind of long-term serious diet or exercise regimen, make sure you get yourself checked out by your family physician, general practitioner, whatever. Talk to a health scientist. Come up with a diet. Come up with the actual exercises that are safe for you to do. Start out small and build your way up. What I did, so started with walking, maybe two miles every day, and at about a two, 2.5 mile per hour pace. Kind of slow, but I got to the point now, I'm about five miles per hour, kind of walking and jogging. I make sure every single day that I do at least some form of that and at least two and a half miles. Lately, I've been doing about five miles of jogging almost every single day. So one of the best things you can do on a diet is actually walking. Take 10 to 15 minutes a day, especially if you've never done this before. Get used to that. Work your way up from a starting point, something that's reasonable. Then you can start running and jogging, get into more rigorous exercises, increase your speed, increase your distance. Maybe now you're walking, jogging two to three miles a day. Work your way up. Make sure you're wearing good shoes. Make sure you're wearing comfortable clothes so you don't have any friction problems. One great tip that I can give everybody is if you can actually find some good music, something to watch, or bring a friend with you, time really passes and you actually start to enjoy going to the gym. And it'll keep you in a good habit 
of getting daily regular exercise. So there's this concept of cutting and shaping. A lot of weightlifters talk about this stuff. Maybe they're in the gym to lose weight, so they'll cut first. You want to have muscles in that, and if you don't eat, for example, don't eat any protein, you're gonna lose muscle mass too, and that accounts for some of your weight loss. You don't really want that. So at some point, it makes sense to be doing some kind of strength training, build your way up, especially in the chest area for men. You need to be thinking about shaping. You're not just losing weight, you need to be doing all kinds of exercises, mix it up, so you're at a appropriate shape. You lose the weight, a lot of people use the word gaunt, you'll look kind of strange. So you want to make sure you're also doing some kind of shaping at some point in the middle of that. Maybe shape one day and then cut two days. Shape one day, cut two days, something like that. Work with the physician, work with the health scientist, work with a personal trainer to come up with how that might work for you. If you get to your goal weight, don't give up. Don't give up, keep going. Again, apply science in every aspect of your life. Okay, I am done for tonight. Been to the gym twice today, so I think this is about it. Cool, cool, cool.